What's going on guys, it's the Bulls and the Bears here with a midweek update video for the Wheel Strategy. It is 12.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday, so the markets are open. This is the one minute chart and you can see the chart moving in real time. We are overall red on the day, barely though, by 87 cents, so it's pretty much a sideways day. We've tried to move up a couple times and each time we've sold off and now we kind of sit at the bottom of the range. Overall sideways, but the fact that we've tried to push up a couple times and failed is a pretty bearish sign and that's just been the the tone of the week monday and tuesday here's the daily chart nasty red days down 1.8 percent on monday followed up by 1.4 percent down on tuesday yesterday and now we sit slightly red on the day possibly going to add to that redness i mean we are at a area where you would expect some support we've bounced off of this area a couple times definitely some um some support from prior times but you know Maybe we just go sideways for a day or two and, and sell off even more. If we don't if we don't move up, we might just keep going down. And that was pretty much expected. I've been warning about this in my in my videos lately, talking about this major orange trend line all the way from the all time highs to now. We hit it for the fourth time on Thursday and Friday. And in my game plan video this weekend, I said, you know, we could expect um, some some downwards movement this week. So be a little weary on selling puts because the, the a move lower would you know put our puts in jeopardy or at least put us in an unfavorable position as opposed to waiting it out a little bit and then selling puts after we've already moved a little bit lower. So that's where we stand. It's coming to fruition. This trend line is holding and we are selling off. Now, did I hold off and follow my own advice and decide to wait a little bit before selling puts? No, I have five open positions. So we are going to go into that right now. We're going to start with DocuSign. So DocuSign wasn't part of my game plan video because it has earnings this week, tomorrow after the bell, matter of fact. But because I like the name and because the premiums are elevated due to the high IV from earnings, I looked to see how far out I could go. And I was actually able to find a pretty favorable strike in my opinion. I sold the 33 strike. So let me actually make this chart look a little bit better, shrink down the access. Here we go. So I sold the 33 strike, I got 30 cents for it, which is a pretty good premium. And that's about, I mean, what is that? Over 20% away? Let's see. I know there is a particular ready a price range. So from where it is now to get to my strike would have to drop over 20%. Now, is that possible? A tech company with earnings? Very much so. It can definitely drop that much, 20% after earnings. But I'm not afraid of that because I think $33 is a very good level. I mean, I was happy getting DocuSign at 50 and in the 40s. So if I could get it at 33, I'm very okay with that because I'm bullish long-term on DocuSign. I, I do think it's going to stick around and have a favorable time in the future. It's going to be a really cheap price. I mean, a $33 stock is very cheap considering what I my max range is $60. I know I can go as high as a $60 stock and I'm taking this at 33. So it, it's, I could go as high as maybe 200 shares of this and sell another put if I wanted to. And I'm only sticking with one, but that just goes to show how good of a price that is. We do have this um, white trend line here, descending trend line that has been following and tapping three, four, five times since March of this year. And that's in its way. So if it does sell off from earnings, it could find some support at this white line and therefore keep me safe uh, because that would, it would find support around 35 or 34 and I would be above my strike. Furthermore, the all-time low of DocuSign is 35. That's where this red line is. That's the all-time low and that's like going back to where it opened, I think, or pretty damn close. So here's the, the all-time chart of DocuSign. We're getting close to that that all-time low made back in 2018. So my strike is below that. So yeah, that would be a major support break if it gets that low, but I wouldn't expect it to drop that much more following that. I would expect people to step in and say, all right, this is low enough, let's start buying. Never mind the fact that it would have had to drop 20% to get to that point in the first place. So it's a win-win for me. I'm happy just keeping the $30 premium if it doesn't go down that far or if it just goes up. And I'm happy to get assigned at $33 per share if I if it does really tank. So happy with that. I decided to take that opportunity with DocuSign. 
Moving down the list, we have Coles. This is one that I mentioned as part of my game plan. I opened this one on Monday as well. So not looking good. Not looking good. This is the current week for Coles right here. So yeah, it was at $31 and now we're at 28. So it dropped $3 per share or about 10%. It's down, all right, 11% this week. In three days, it's down 11%. So, all right, holy crap. Wasn't expecting that kind of move considering it was staying pretty sideways for three straight weeks. And then all of a sudden it drops 11% as soon as I sell a put. Okay, whatever. It's at a decent level. You can see all the support here for the past few months. Um, I like the name. I like discount retailers in this current environment. So I'm happy with this level. I actually sold two puts on this one because I can't afford it. Again, I can go up to $6,000 per position. That would be a quarter of my account. And I have, um, what's that? 5,600 in this one. So even less than 6,000 with two contracts. Now there's all the, all the names that I'm playing this week. I could pretty much do multiple contracts because it's such a cheap price. I only did one contract on all the others because we could be getting some more downside movement like I just showed with Spy. Instead of sitting on my hands completely and not playing anything and just waiting for a better level, I decided to still play names but not go all in. Just do one contract at a time and then if things get ugly, I could always sell the second contract and get my 200 shares at an even lower price and just better my average as opposed to jumping in with two puts right off the bat. But with Kohl's, Kohl's is the only one that I actually did do a full two contracts with at uh, the 28 strike. So right now, it is underwater. If I go to the 15 minute chart, actually the five minute chart, you can see we are below 28 today. Uh, up and down right now. Right now we are below it, but we were above it earlier today. We'll see what happens. We still have all day today, tomorrow, and Friday. So anything can happen. I will consider rolling positions, but I usually don't consider doing it until at least Thursday. So nothing, not going to make any new moves today, but this is what Kohl's is looking like. It did have an X dividend date this week. It was a 50 cent dividend. So you do expect it to drop at least 50 cents, but you know, that's not 11%. I didn't, wasn't expecting 11%. I was expecting a 50 cent drop, not a $3 drop, but uh, yeah, that's the nature of Kohl's. Hopefully we find a bounce after this dramatic drop over the past couple days. VF Corp is another one. This is part of the game plan as well. I sold this on Monday at the 29 strike. This one gapped down quite a bit. I think my game plan was like the $31 strike, but because we gapped down to $31, I was able to get a much lower strike, obviously, to $29. It gapped down a lot because I think it gave unfavorable an unfavorable outlook for the next quarter or next year, and the CEO stepped down or the co-CEO stepped down. So it gapped down like 7% and then sold off that day. I was hesitant to actually play it because of that fundamental news, but I decided to go with it anyway because the 29 strike was a much better level than what I was looking at before. And I was hoping that the gap down of 7% followed by a little bit of a sell-off would somewhat would be a somewhat of an overreaction and then it would kind of curl back up. But no, it's continuing to sell off with the rest of the market, but the 29 strike is in this ultimate buy zone that I have here, uh, this demand zone. So I would not be, I wouldn't mind being uh, signed down here at all. Right now we are 30 cents below my cost basis. Here is the five minute chart. Just got below it today. Not looking great. We're definitely going to need a bit of a green day in the market tomorrow and Friday for this thing to kind of recover. Otherwise I'm going to get assigned on this and likely a couple other names. Suncor is another one. This is also part of the game plan. I sold the 3050 strike and you can see just how much it's gone down this week. Again, just like Kohl's, it just completely tanked. It opened at $32, about $32.50, and now it's down to $30. So it's dropped almost 10%. Let's see what the weekly chart says. So it's down over 6% on the week. A pretty nasty candle on the weekly chart, and we're not done yet. If I go to the daily, this is definitely a support area. This is why I played this level to begin with. Um, you can see just how many times we've kind of stopped and bounced off of this area of 30.50 or the $30 mark. So that's why I was confident playing it. Right now we're cutting through it like butter as we just continue to tank. And uh, well, this one's underwater by 50 cents. It kind of got stuffed by that strike level. If I go to the 15 minute chart, 
we started to push up today, got to my strike just about, and then rejected. So it might have a hard time getting above that this week. It's already showing some signs of resistance there. And this one might be getting assigned. So those are the names that I opened on Monday. This one was for 20 cents. I think I forgot to say that. Um, Suncor, I got 20 cents. VF Corp, I got 20 cents. Kohl's, I got 18 cents per contract for $36 total. And then Docky signed 30 cents. So that's a total of $106 there collected on the week. There are two more names that I actually opened on Tuesday. After a nasty red day Monday, Tuesday showed up, more selling, and I decided to get into a couple more positions now that we're at a much better level. One of which being Comcast. And this one I forgot to add to my banner down below, so forgive me. But Comcast is another open position of mine. So I actually have six open positions, which is nuts considering I was saying be play cautious this week. Um, I sold this one yesterday at the 34 strike. After a couple nasty red days, it gave me a good opportunity to sell a put because over the weekend, Comcast was way up here. This is, this is where Friday's close was, that green candle. So there was no close level for offering good premium that I wanted to play. But after we sold off Monday and Tuesday, now the a solid level of 34 right here showed its face at with good premium and I was able to take it. So I took that, I got 21 cents per contract there. I only sold the one contract and it looks like we're actually finding some type of bottom here. We go to that five minute chart. We got as low as 34.20, popped up, sold off again, higher low, popping back up. You can see that nice lower wick on the daily chart. So that's actually looking pretty good. You know, red days offer the best opportunity to sell puts because the stock is already making that downwards move. And then you sell a put out of the money with an, an additional cushion in between the current price and your strike, meaning the stock would have to go even more in that direction, become extended, right? Which would only increase the chances that it actually pops up in the other direction. So selling puts on red days gives you great opportunities because at some point, you know, that red day will, uh, or that red move will turn around and offer some type of pullback. And that's where you can take advantage of, of that theta decay of, on your contract. So yeah, I sold the put on 34 at 34, got 21 cents for, it. and this one's looking good because I sold it after it already sold off quite a bit. Same thing with Corterra. I don't even have this on my list. I got to type it in. Corterra Energy. This is another energy name, just like Suncor. So maybe ill-advised to have um, an additional energy type of name. But I sold this one yesterday, just like Comcast, after a pretty nasty couple of days right here. Two straight red days from 27.50 down to 25.50. That's when I sold a cash secured put on Corterra at the 25 strike. I sold it for 15 cents, so not a whole lot, but it was definitely the 30% annualized return that I'm looking for. And I just sold the one contract, it's a cheap price, I can afford it, and I'm liking the level. I mean, look at this level. This is a great, great support level that's been lasting for months, all the way from July, even back here to March of 2022. You can see it have a, had a little bit of support there before it moved up. So this is a fantastic level. Um, it wasn't there on the weekend because Cortero was much higher. It was way up here on the weekend when I was doing my research and there was no level at this good of, of support that was paying enough premium. I had to wait for it to sell off first before I could actually get good premium at a good strike. So I'm happy with this level. I don't think this one or Comcast, I, I, I'm not believing that it's going to get assigned. I feel much better about these two positions expiring worthless because I had sold them after the fact after it sold off a lot so they're they're in a very good position while the others that i opened on monday before all that selling really came in like vf corp that's these are the ones that are likely to get assigned or at least in the most trouble Coles again sun is, is not looking great docusign we'll have to see how earnings goes but um i'm not too worried about this one because i want to get in and that's a really good price 33 strike I'm happy with that. So those are all the positions I'm in. Six positions, quite a bit, putting my money to work for sure this week. I collected a total of $142 in put premium this week. So we'll see what I get to close early or expire worthless, and we'll see what I can get us what I get assigned on. So I'm actually going away this weekend. 
from Friday to Sunday, so I'm not going to be able to really record and post a weekly recap video in a timely manner. I might be able to get it Sunday. It might not come out till Monday. So it'll be a little while before my recap video comes out, but there will be one and you'll see exactly what I get assigned on. Until then, we're just going to wait and see what the market does. I'm not going to be opening any new positions. If anything, I'll just close something. So that's it. That's what I got going on right now. Let me know in the comments down below if you have anything open in the wheel. I'd love to hear other wheel traders and what they're doing out there. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe for more content, and I will see you all next time.